Today in the news, we got the Ultimate DX and what the PS5 means for PCs. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Microsoft. The company has just announced the latest update to DirectX, and it's called DirectX Ultimate. This version of DirectX features an updated version of DX Ray Tracing, or DXR, variable rate shading, mesh shaders, and sampler feedback. Now, those things aren't really new on their own. In fact, Nvidia already has support for pretty much all of them on their Turing-based GPUs right now. But DirectX Ultimate essentially merges all of those individual features under the same package to make it easier for developers. While Turing-based GPUs are the first to take advantage of DX12 Ultimate out of the box, AMD's Navi 2X or RDNA 2 GPUs will also take advantage of the new standard, and we can expect the same thing for Intel's upcoming GPUs, except for the PS5 of course, since the console doesn't actually use DirectX. Speaking of the PS5, all of the specs have been released during what felt like a three-hour presentation on the history of PlayStation. I mean, seriously, I enjoyed the first like 20 minutes, but the last 40 were really stretching it out thin. In any case, here they are. A highly customized 8-core 16-thread Zen 2-based CPU with clocks of up to 3.5 GHz. On the graphics side of things, we got an RDNA 2-based integrated graphics with 36 compute units and clocks of up to 2.23 GHz, and an SSD faster than pretty much anything on the market right now. It has raw read speeds of 5.5 GB per second. Now, yes, that console is underpowered when compared on paper to the Xbox Series X, but it looks like Sony went really deep into customizations. In fact, Mark Cerny from Sony went as far as saying this. If you see a similar discrete GPU available as a PC card at roughly the same time as we release our console, that means our collaboration with AMD succeeded in producing technology useful in both worlds. It doesn't mean that we at Sony simply incorporated the PC part into our console. Basically, Sony helped build RDNA 2 and we might see some of those advances in a standard discrete card. Personally, the only thing that got me really excited in this next gen console race is the absolutely insane clock speeds on the PS5 GPU. 2230 megahertz is a lot. I mean, an RX 5700 XT at that speed beats an RTX 2070 Super and gets close to 2080 performance. Add to that all of the advances AMD has made to the RDNA 2 architecture and the huge increase in CU count. I mean, if the Xbox Series X can get 56 CUs on the silicon, we're definitely getting cards with more than that. So you add up all of those factors and we got a pretty good idea of what is to come from AMD's big Navi 2X cards. Now, obviously, as excited as I am about the next AMD line of GPUs, we shouldn't forget that Nvidia is right there waiting to take its revenge on the debate. They've had the performance crown for I forgot how long and I don't think that they're gonna let AMD take it so easily. So what do you guys think? Are we gonna see super high CU count and super high clock speed or the fact that the PS5 only has 36 CUs plays a role on the fact that it has such a high clock speed? Personally I'm going with they're both gonna happen. Let me know your thoughts down below. Moving on to some Intel news, there's some benchmarks that popped up for the upcoming 10900K and KF. Rogue Game on Twitter posted this benchmark comparing the Intel CPU to AMD's 12 core 3900X. As you can see, the 10 core Intel CPU is doing really well even though it has two fewer cores with a score of 13,142. That's despite it using slower memory clocked at 2666 MHz. You can see the 3900X has better scores than the 10900K only at 3400 MHz on this TimeSpy CPU bench. This is a gaming specific benchmark though, so on other multi-threaded tasks, AMD will probably take over again, but we'll have to wait and see to compare them better. In gaming news, Overwatch has just revealed their newest hero called Echo. Unlike what most of the community thought, she's not a healer. She's a DPS character because, of course, we need more of those. In any case, her kit is pretty awesome. She can fly, has a pretty varied arsenal. Also, her ultimate is kind of insane. She can transform into any of the enemy team's heroes and just get their ultimate super quickly. She will definitely need a lot of balance work before she hits the live servers, but you can check her out right now on the PTR. 
Moving on, we got the weekly free game check. I mean, everyone's pretty much self-quarantining. So right now on the Epic Store, you can get the Stanley Parable and the first Watch Dogs for free until next Thursday. If you like weird, quirky games with multiple endings and haven't watched anyone play it yet, I would highly suggest you get the Stanley Parable and try it out this weekend. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Yes, it's a new hairdo. Take care.